the sea. Uh, the star, 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 gotta have it. Oh, oh, the star. So I think that makes a really good transition to the other element of that girl, right? Like the verbal element of that girl is like, so let's say that you wore pants every day and you never showed cleavage, but but you are totally willing to say exactly what you want. You call the dude and say, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? You speak up in class and you're like, actually, I'm not okay with that. Oh, snaps. You push your proposal at work and mm, get it. Mm, You're that girl. Right? You are. Yep. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of names for that girl. Yeah. Bitch is one of them. <laughs> That's the most common. That is the most common. Because if you're, at, especially if you're at work mm. and you are using what people t- term as masculine types, so like being aggressive or um, being adamant, right? Yeah. You pushing like there's this notion of you pushing your agenda or pushing your presence or letting people know that you're not just going to sit quietly and wait until it's your turn which is also deemed feminine um, but you're going to operate in this space in a way that gets your things done and lets people know that you're there and what you think matters like that's termed a, being a bitch whereas if that guy does it we should do a that guy one Bam, so. Yeah, ooh, cause, yeah, because they're like mm-hmm. parallels, but it's so inverted, right? Like, Very inverted. And maybe even like almost like binary, like that guy is either the hyper douche, hyper successful, or that guy is the guy that's thoughtful and quiet and maybe a little on the shy side, maybe mm-hmm. a little awkward, and then mm-hmm. oh, that yeah. guy. Uh, such a shame. Such a shame. So yeah. nice. Never get, never get the girls. Never keep them if they get them. Sweater. <laughs> and it's all very heteronormative. Yeah, it's all incredibly heteronormative. Yeah, because people don't know what to do with relationships that are outside of the man woman or male female kind of paradigm. But when right. you, once you recognize and accept that there is a spectrum for sexuality, for gender expression, then a lot of these uh, tropes and un- so societal understandings of how we interact with each other they don't work. And in that friction where things don't work is the danger of uh, violence that happens against, um, for example, transgendered persons when it's found out that they're passing or with um, black people when, you know, there's so many different ways in which when you fall out of line or when you're not in the box people want to keep putting you in, their notion is... You're doing something wrong. I don't accept what's happening. I have no idea how to react. So there's violence or there's lashing out. There's gnashing of teeth. It's really very unfortunate and and sometimes very uh, tragic. And I think think sometimes, too, the violence isn't just, like, personal, like, on a one-on-one kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But it's a reaction to, so Mm -hmm. someone else is falling outside of the paradigm. Right. And then an individual seeing someone else falling outside of the paradigm mm-hmm. is threatened, not on a personal individual lesson mm-hmm. or level like, oh, I'm uncomfortable with you, mm-hmm. but your being outside of the paradigm highlights the ways in which I am outside of the paradigm and that threatens my existence within an empire. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because yes. like, like if you're outside of the paradigm, but I'm next mm-hmm. to you, then that puts me under suspicion, right? And yeah. then the ways that I actually do fall yeah. out of the paradigm become highlighted. Yes. Which, yes. if we all just accepted that we don't fit in the paradigm, <laughs> so it would be okay. Yeah. But if we're yeah. constantly trying to, to pressure ourselves into mm-hmm. a, a place of assimilation, really, mm-hmm. then if someone else's difference, quote unquote difference, right. becomes a threat. Like, it becomes oh, yeah. a survival threat. Yes, and it also invites others to embrace their own difference. So I'm thinking of the great that girl, we have a that girl accolade. Of fame. Yes, okay. so I forget her name, we're going to put it up. But it's the young gal who um, was shot in the face on a bus because she was going to school 
in an environment where she wasn't supposed to be yeah. going to school, getting educated, da, da, da. She had been blogging or somehow found a way to get on the internet and talk about life. So she's speaking yeah. out. Right. She's speaking her mind. She's speaking against not only the way that her society is working out, but the ways that it was not working out specifically against people like her. Uh, and so she gets shot in the face, lives, and then continues on to tell her story. It yes. ended up launching her into the global spotlight. She ends up speaking at the UN. Like there's all of these. Yeah. I think she was she nominated for a peace Nobel Peace Prize. I, she got it. She yes. That girl, right? That girl right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's the, that is a perfect example of what can happen if you're that girl. But then also how you could subvert all of the things that people want to like. They literally went out to try and kill her. A child, and you know, she was like she was like thirteen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Point blank. So, mm hmm, mm hmm, yeah. So, so if we take, all right, so if we take that girl, yeah, as like an intentional attempt to limit an already existing subversion, right? Mm -hmm. Because even if it's not conscious, mm hmm. Being that girl is the first act. You know what I mean? Like anytime you're willing to be like, this is all of me, that's subversive. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I'm thinking about like how do we how do we lift that up in other people? Mm -hmm. How do we flip mm -hmm. that language? Or, or maybe not even flip the language but reclaim it like Yes. I'm that girl and yes. instead of I'm not that girl, but mm. You know who does that really well? We talk about flipping and subverting language. You gotta talk about hip hop. Yes. So you think of the women of hip hop. <laughs> yeah, no, don't apologize for awesome. I want to be about, that girl. I want to talk about hip hop Boom. every single day of my life. Done. And maybe also talk about chance in the same conversation. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. All right. I believe it's possible. Let's go. Let's Hold go. It hard. Ivy Queen. I forgot about Ivy Queen. If you guys don't know about Ivy Queen. Oh, oh, that needs to happen. Yo, like, really? I was, somehow, the light went off, like, 30 minutes ago. I was like, oh, yeah, Ivy Queen. Feminist reggaeton. Yes. Or, like, reclamative reggaeton, right? Where she, like, takes on all this really masculine language. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and there's some studies and, like, articles and things that have happened about what happens when women take really aggressive masculine tropes mm -hmm. and flip them, mm -hmm, right? And... Mm -hmm use that language to make men objects or to make sort of like sexual boasts. And that, uh -huh. that objectification flip is not, is kind of, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. Um, well, cause like, I believe that, it's so like side detour, yeah. but I don't believe that love is about like claiming territory okay. or like grabbing someone's body, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think when we talk about sex, whether it's connected to love or not, we should be, conscious of the fact that it involves another living being and honoring them for their living beingness. Mm -hmm. So the, the mm -hmm. flip of the language for, for claiming is kind of problematic to me. Mm -hmm. But to take that language for negotiating the world, I think it's really powerful. So all right. Anyway. Yes. Well yes. I mean I think about in terms of so you're thinking of female rappers so many, I'm not going to name them all here, it's impossible, who do this. So there's Queen Latifah who starts off and she claims her crown as queen. Mm -hmm. And she goes on and does amazing things with the work that she does. I'm also thinking, though, now it's not as recent, but um, bad is tri Trina. So she does her, Lil' Trina. Kim, yeah. Lil' Kim for sure, her stuff just gets down and dirty. No apologies. Oh, yeah, Missy Elliott. Yes, and then more recently, she became really pop, but um, Mar uh, Black Barbie. Nicki Minaj is, yes, yo, I will have arguments with people about Nicki Minaj because I don't even care. I love Nicki Minaj. <laughs> so do we care. No, hey, <laughs> I don't have a dog in a fight, but I definitely appreciate how she took some of the things that Lil' Kim was doing. Yeah. 
she kind of rounded the edges. And she read the room of people who were consuming hip hop, which has shifted into like white teenagers from suburbia. Because all the black folks are like, y'all look, gonna have that. We'll be over here, you know. Ooh, we could talk a different day, but we could talk about all of the hip hop shifts that are happening, right? And like, like the location of hip hop, as far as like a digital location. Because mm. there's like top 40 hip hop, yeah. and then like that changes regionally, mm-hmm. right? And so mm-hmm. the market changes regionally. Yeah, too. that's true. Um, and then you can talk about like music with hip hop and like this like never ending <laughs> pile of, of stuff. Um, and then you can talk about things mm-hmm. that show up on like. DJ booth, right? And like mm. sort of like underground sort of continuation of mixtape culture and like right, different right, right. ways to share, right? And like who buys what or like who's listening to what and the sort of like mm. lines that are being drawn around that. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's a huge conversation. I grew up in South Texas, so I, I had the pleasure of listening to. Uh, Screwing, chop, chopped and screwed music. I I don't know if syrup has. Well, I think syrup is just a drink. For those who don't know, <laughs> it is where you take cough syrup and you turn it into an alcoholic beverage. We're not gonna. We're. I'm not there's gonna no judgment. I mean, there's no promotion either. It's yeah, just, it's fake. It's here. Just, it's, uh, so that you don't have to go through the googling yourself. <laughs> Feel free though. Why not? Google image yourself up. I'm a sister. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no. No, it's yes. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Um, and then, this is also kind of random, but there was also, there seemed to be a shift in the music that I would hear, at least on the radio, when I back when I listened to it, where people were talking about strippers and clubs, and that, that became a genre of music, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. Enough music came out that it was a genre. Fell in love with a stripper, up in the club, to the windows to the walls. I mean, mm. what? Mm. Is that a subgenre? Because part of me is like, that's a subgenre, but then it's just like a subgenre of life, right? Like, we've <laughs> always had poetry about the club before we called it the club when it was the lounge. Or the uh, house party. Or the house party. Before that, it was the rent party. Yeah. You know, and then we have uh, R&B. And, like, like, there's always been a narrative of, like, the community party, whatever it is. All right, wherever the community is. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. There is an added emphasis on strippers recently. But yeah, like, making it rain and all of this business. Yeah. Like, stripper culture. What do we... Hmm. I don't want to... I want to come back to that girl a little bit because I feel like that could really go. So, so if you're going to leave us a comment, tell us if yes. you'd like us to talk about strippers. Yes. And like this sort of interesting, because I don't even think that's a hip hop thing. I think it's the top 40 thing, right? Where like everybody's really into this idea of like, I go to the strip club right. and I spend X amount of money right. just so you know. Right. That's interesting. Drop Should we talk bottles. about it? Yes. Let us know. Let us know. And don't pop any bottles without us, okay? We'll we'll all do that together. I have a bottle of Snapple waiting for this conversation. Because <laughs> I don't drink. Yes. Um, but I like to participate. So, this is what, hate don't participate? Uh, there are a whole bunch of hater, like, don't hate participate. Oh, she's born in 19 Haiti hate. She's from Haiti. Oh. Like, there's a whole bunch of, like, random. <laughs> it's sort of like your mama jokes. Except for haters. Except for haters. Yeah. (laughs) So, on that lovely note, 